If you are looking for top of the line tax software, then you might be considering TurboTax to file your 2020 taxes this year. But with such a big brand, it also comes with a big price. In this video, I'm going to be covering a complete review and walkthrough of TurboTax and give you a better understanding of when it's best to use a robust tax software like TurboTax or when you should look elsewhere. guys, it's Justine with the College Investor, investing and personal finance for millennials. We are going over TurboTax and always the number one question is, can you file for free using this tax software? Now, it is possible to file for free with TurboTax if you are a W-2 income earner and you qualify for the earned income tax credit or the child tax credit. What's new for this year is that if you had unemployment income from 2020, that's also included in the free tier. Now, if you had contributed to a traditional IRA or a health savings account, or you want to deduct student loan interest, then you won't qualify for the free tier. You're going to have to level up to the deluxe edition. Crypto traders are going to move into that premier level. No, if you are just a W-2 income earner and you have student loan interest that you would like to deduct, you're better off looking at H&R Block because H&R Block actually includes student loan interest deductions in their free version. So what's new in 2021 with TurboTax? First, TurboTax really worked on ease of use by allowing users to connect to their accounts and upload their documents directly to the platform. So this really can streamline information for you and save on time. Plus, if you've never received your stimulus check, you can apply for the stimulus tax credit through TurboTax. You are going to need IRS letter notice 1444 in order to make that happen, but just know that you can make it happen through TurboTax. Now, a favorite new feature in TurboTax is the interest-free refund advance loan. So if you want to get your refund very quickly, you can do so through this program, and those loan amounts can range between $250 up to $2,000 based on your estimated refund. Now, there's really no strings attached to this. The only thing is, is it comes on a debit card. And no matter which filing status you end up choosing and the, the pricing packages, all filers using TurboTax do have access to product support specialists to help you throughout your return. Okay, let's talk about pricing. If you wanna pay the highest prices when it comes to the online tax software, then you're gonna find that with TurboTax, unfortunately. They just come with the highest prices, but sometimes that can be beneficial because this is such a premium and robust online tax software system. Let's go ahead and jump over to the pricing packages and we'll walk you through your options. Okay, so TurboTax typically adjusts their prices throughout the tax season. So if you want to lock in the lowest rates, you're best to do that in December and January. If it's past that, then you're probably going to be paying the full amount. So they do have that free edition that I was telling you guys about, zero for your federal and state and to file so long as you meet those requirements. The deluxe edition is just $40 and you'll be able to do everything in the free version. Plus you'll get options for various tax deductions and maximize your mortgage tax deduction among others. Then the premiere is currently $70. The full price is $90. If you have outside investments, you're going to be able to file and report those things appropriately using the premier version. And then the self-employed is $90. Normal price is $120. So if you're a freelancer or small business owner, they're going to cover those deductions for various tax breaks that they might be able to find with your business. All right, so if you're hopping on board with the TurboTax train, let's go ahead and jump into the software and I'll show you exactly what it looks like. Okay, let's go ahead and get started with filing our taxes using TurboTax and we're gonna start with the free edition and go ahead and get started. Now, if you're brand new to TurboTax, you'll just go ahead and pop in your email address and set up your user ID, password, and a phone number. 
Once you're logged in, you are going to be prompted on some of these little icons to fill in some information. So whether you've moved, bought a home, uh, received unemployment income, any of these things, you can go ahead and click and highlight and then that's going to change the types of prompts that you will receive throughout the tax software experience. So make sure you thoroughly review all of these different options before clicking continue. If you're brand new to TurboTax, you're going to want to put in your personal information add that in and then we're going to go ahead and go through the actual prompts here. And you're going to sign a legal disclaimer just saying that, you know, you authorize TurboTax to go ahead and file your taxes, send this information off to the IRS. Once you're inside of TurboTax, this is what the dashboard looks like. So you're going to have this left-hand menu here where you can toggle between your info, federal and state returns, and then all the way down to when you get to the filing status. If you ever need to return back to the home screen, it looks like you can click this tax home. And then if you need to make any changes here, you can update your personal information or go ahead and fill that out if you're brand new and continue. Okay, then you're going to see a prompt and typically with these tax softwares, if they have multiple options, especially paid options, then you're going to be prompted to upgrade. Go ahead and just click not now and then we can get into your federal return. What I really like about TurboTax is the dashboard, really simple. Not a lot of text going on. Everything is really spaced out if you're doing this on your desktop. And if ever you have a question on something, you can click this little learn more button and that's going to hopefully <laughs> pop up a uh, help window. There we go. Uh, a little help window that says exactly what's going on, why they're asking that question. So this setup, if you are comparing TurboTax to H&R Block, they're very, very similar. The dashboards are almost identical. Okay. So in the federal return, you're going to see this broken down into those main categories, your income, deductions and credits, any other tax situations, and then you're going to look at the review. What I like about TurboTax is they've got these nice uh, organized boxes where you can just go through and click start so you know exactly where you're at and these little not started prompts will change as soon as you start working on these different documents. So you know exactly which items you've missed and which ones you still need to go through. Okay, so what's cool about TurboTax is if you have a W-2, you can go ahead and upload it or you can type it in manually. The plus about uploading it is that the chance of error is significantly reduced versus typing it in. Let's go ahead and see if I can upload my dummy W-2 here. Okay, this is awesome and I like this a lot better than H&R Block. Now, obviously this W-2 is fake, but I was able to get this W-2 uploaded when I was doing this with H&R Block. They wanted me to type it in manually. Uh, so I'm very pleased with that. It looks like I have to go ahead and just do a quick check to make sure this information uploaded correctly. And I already see a zip code missing. So I'll go ahead and add that in. And then we gotta make sure that this information translated. Okay, so they, they got my salary wrong, and I think it's because they added some uh, sense and change of which I didn't have in my example. So I'm just gonna quickly change this, but it's always a good idea to check that you have all of the numbers uploaded correctly. So even though this was a handy feature, I'm still having to go in and correct this. 
and then it looks like my box 12 codes did not upload either. So I'm gonna go ahead and add those in manually. Okay, after making those quick changes, it looks like they uh, have a refund in place for me. And then we'll go over the deductions and credits section and look for any uncommon situations. These typically won't apply to normal W-2 earners who don't have a lot of other credits. But you'll want to make sure just to go through this quick checklist to see exactly whether or not these situations apply to you. All right, so just a double check that this is what we entered and click continue. And let's see, they're asking for any 1099 INT forms or if we had a health savings account, these are items of which you would go ahead and start. So let's say, let's say we did have a health savings account. All right, so if you had a health savings account, that's gonna bump you out of the free edition and it's gonna bump you into the deluxe edition. If you are trying to file your taxes early, you can lock in a discounted rate for $40 for federal and then your state is gonna be additional. So let's say if we do that. All right, did you use your health savings account to pay for anything in 2020? Yes. Okay, so you can see how the refund, the federal refund had updated based upon what I put on the uh, 1099-SA form. So uh, what I like about TurboTax is that you're gonna see this number fluctuate as you fill things out, which is kind of a cool feature if you wanna keep tracking that. Cool, and that bumped up the refund again. So in adding my HSA form, the refund adjusted. So wages and income are done. Let's go ahead and wrap that portion up. And then we're gonna get another prompt <laughs> to upgrade. No thanks. What I've been noticing with some of these tax platforms is they are being a, a extra diligent about making sure you are reporting cryptocurrency. And if you do any sort of crypto trading, they're gonna prompt you about this. So if that's you, then you'll go ahead and click yes and go through those prompts. But if you ever have questions on that, you can go ahead and click this uh, question box. That question box is gonna pop up and help. Then we're gonna go into the deductions and credits finally. And we're gonna opt for the standard deduction, which I think most people are going to find themselves in. And then we can say, okay, sounds good. All right, so if you had student loan interest that you paid on in 2020, you wanna go ahead and click that button and go ahead and go through these prompts. Okay, so if you're trying to do this early, the, it looks like TurboTax is not letting you fill out those forms. So as soon as they're ready, you're gonna be able to go back in and update that. But for now, it's going to say not started, which is a good indicator that you can go back in and finish that up. And we're gonna go through other tax situations and go through all of these questions. All right, so what's new for 2021 is you're gonna see the stimulus payment section here to make sure that you report that correctly to the IRS. Okay, so this is also a, a, a new area for TurboTax. It looks like the tax laws have changed and we're not required to report our health insurance coverage status on your federal return. But if you do have this form 1095A, then you'll need to go ahead and enter the information on it. Um, if you don't, then just click, I don't have it. Then we'll do state returns. 
If you are filing your taxes early, you're going to notice that your state return won't be available until later. So you can go ahead and just leave your return where it's at and then go back into your state. What's nice about using TurboTax is all of the information that you entered in on your federal side of your return can be copied over to your state return. And it's just an additional five minutes just to go over and make sure everything transferred correctly. Now, if you are getting a head start on filing your taxes, you can set up notifications for when some of these tax return forms are available to you so that you can go ahead and input them. All right. One thing about TurboTax that I'm not really digging is that I think we've gone through at least three, if not four prompts now to upgrade again and again. Uh, So I can see how this can quickly get really pricey when TurboTax is already one of the highest priced uh, tax software that you will find out there. But you can go ahead and lock in your price for where you're at and review your order, your refund info, and then file your returns once the IRS and your state is ready to accept those returns. Okay, just going back to the home screen real quick. TurboTax, their dashboard, really easy to use, very simple. I like how clean the navigation is. There wasn't a whole lot of text. Everything's spaced out. And all of the different sections of your return were clearly organized, which made filing your taxes with TurboTax really simple. And that's how you file your 2020 taxes with TurboTax. Okay, so obviously TurboTax is really easy to use. They deliver a really great user experience. So if you are wanting something that is big brand label, you're going to have a really easy time navigating through TurboTax. Just know that there is a premium price (laughs) to using this tax software, but maybe that might be worth your time knowing that you don't have to figure things out on your own. It's just very intuitive. Now, if you are a W-2 earner and you want to report that student loan interest deduction, you're better off using the free version with H&R Block. If you are a bargain hunter, but you still want a great user experience, you're better off looking at something like Free Tax USA or Tax Slayer, where you're going to pay a cheaper amount and still have a great experience filing your taxes online. Now we cover a bunch of online tax software on the website, so be sure to check out all of our complete reviews before you make your decision at thecollegeinvestor.com.